hey guys welcome back to think tech in this video we'll cover the second part of linear classification which is a coding exercise so in this code i have implemented linear classification as well as logistic regression both of them uh, without using any without any external libraries so everything we have written by hand so that we understand the internals of how these algorithms work and we are able to visualize when we are trying to solve problems related to linear classification so let us get started so this is my python uh, jupyter notebook so the first thing what i have done is i have you know uh, basically imported the pytorch library because that is how i've written this then next thing is we are using a random function to generate random points and plot them as a scatter point uh, scatter plot so and the points so we have to generate points between 0 and minus 1 0 and 1 so we are generating points between 0 and 1 and we are trying to plot those in a scatter plot next what we are doing is we are drawing a circle and classifying so this is your circle and all the points inside of the circle are classified as yellow and what is outside the circle is classified as purple now you might notice that we are passing it in some funny way but this is how the scatter matplotlib scatter plot expects the uh, function or the points that we want to plot to be passed but this is something that you can ignore this you can just do it like this and your plots will look good now the next thing that we have done is we have tried to use linear classification in this implementation right so let us go one by one first is we are implementing the uh, we are initializing the weights parameter so we discussed in the theory video that there are two parameters for linear classification one is your weight vector and one is your bias vector so the dimension of the weight vector is almost is always exactly same to your dimension of the input vector right so here we have uh, two points x and y coordinates so your weight vector is also a array of two points and your bias is always a single scalar so this is your bias so we have initialized our weight points to be one comma one and bias to be minus one now this is the implementation of your classification equation which was weights into input tensor plus the bias greater than zero now one good thing about implementing these things in pytorch is that you don't have to worry about dimensions and all those things you can use broadcasting the way i have used here and you can be rest assured that the dimension matching and everything will take uh, care automatically so that is why pytorch is very famous or is being increasingly used for implementing machine learning code uh, all across the industry then we have defined an accuracy function so accuracy is nothing but given how many points are inside the circle what how close is our prediction or how correct is our prediction so we compare our predicted labels with the points in the circle and we calculate its mean so basically if it is high then our accuracy is high if it is low then it is accuracy is low and then finally we have a show function this basically does nothing but again plot your uh, whatever you have predicted it sort of plots those labels so that it tells us how correct our predictions are going or how off our predictions are so next what we do is we do we call a pred y classify uh, on the input which is x coordinates the weights parameters and the bias parameter and we get a predicted array of labels and we pass it to the accuracy function we first print, print that uh, print that as a scatter plot and then we pass it to the accuracy function so we see here that accuracy is not very good it is 29 percent and we can see why because as you can see here also that a lot of points are being misclassified as being inside the circle and outside the circle it is sort of drawing a diagonal and whatever points are outside the diagonal are getting misclassified so it's a fairly incorrect model next what we do is we implement logistic regression right because we discussed that linear classification is a very strict model it's a very hard condition based model it might not work when you have outliers because see uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out a linear plane now but the points are distributed according to a circle so there is no way that a linear line can mimic the model of an arc right so there will always be outliers now linear classification is very sensitive to outliers therefore we have to go to logistic regression to smoothen it out so that the impact of outliers is reduced by a lot that is why as we discussed in the theory video also that we have to use logistic regression 
in scenarios where there might be outliers and there are no clear linear boundaries between different classes right here there are just two classes so there is no no clear boundary between the two classes of uh, points that we want to classify so this is the predict function predict function is your sigmoid function that we discussed so sigmoid function we have implemented like this uh, the x part in the sigmoid function if you go back to the theory video we defined it sigmoid function as 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus x so that x part is generally called as a logit in sigmoid function so it is basically our output right the output of the linear classification equation which is nothing but similar to what we used earlier also which is weights into input plus the bias and this is the calculation of your sigmoid expression so this your this is your prediction this is basically predicting a probability and then we are predicting the loss right so what loss is doing is loss is actually our negative log likelihood so this again we discussed in our theory video which is basically exactly similar to how we have implemented so this is the actual label into prediction uh, log of prediction plus 1 minus the actual label plus into 1 minus the prediction right so now you might be wondering why we have added this variable or this value which we are not discussing in the theory section so actually what happens is that log of uh, 0 is undefined can be you know uh, infinity so if your prediction becomes 100 percent accurate accurate right and it starts giving zero probability to one of the class right assume there is no outliers nothing it's a very neatly distributed data and you can draw a single line which 100 percent correctly classifies the data this will start giving you not a number error and basically then your entire loss function will start giving you a lot of number error and that is why to avoid that we've added a very 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 small number which is e to the power minus 10 it is locked sort of uh, insignificant number in terms of calculation but in terms of mathematical validity of the formula this will ensure that the validity still maintains and you do not get a not a number output right so that is the only reason why we have added this now we use the predict function to print our predicted labels so we pass again the input the weights and the bias and this time we print both the loss and the accuracy so here you can see that in this scenario our uh, loss is basically 0.12 and our accuracy is 0.65 right so uh, now we have the logistic regression implementation also now what you can do is we to get a better accuracy what we can do we can just flip the signs of the weights so this is basically on hit and trial purpose there is no logic behind why we are doing this you can just flip the signs and you can see what it is uh, is it improving your accuracy and it basically does improve your accuracy it uh, sort of takes your accuracy to 71 percent and reduces the loss to 59 percent you can even fine tune it further and use improve the increase the bias value to 1.2 and you see that you yeah, now your accuracy has become almost 89 percent and the loss is 54 percent or 0.54 so now here even now you can see that it is very difficult to come up with values that give you the highest accuracy by hand right there is it requires a lot of effort by just fine tuning these two parameters and for different values and see for which value you're getting the maximum uh, accuracy or the minimum loss therefore we have to come up with a more smarter way of doing this right and that is why we implement the linear classification as a gradient descent problem now in the theory video we did not discuss the gradient descent or how do you actually derive the gradient of this loss function with respect to w and b but we just you know discuss the final output right so we'll use that final output here and in the next video we'll when we'll talk about gradient descent we'll go in detail of how you can derive the gradients of uh, this function right so just wait for that video for that derivation but here you can now just simply use the result of that derivation so let me go through this uh, piece of code and understand it line by line so what we are doing here is we are first classifying the weights and bias so again the initial value here does not matter uh, you can use any random values it should be like sort of uh, within the expected range you can use some smart guesses so that it does not take very long for your model to first you know correct the impact of 
bad initialization and then start learning so you can give something which is approximately correct so that it is easy for your model to then learn on from there right the bias and then the learning rate we have is set to be 0.5 right this is something you can again is a hyperparameter as you already discussed in linear regression so you can set it uh, this as something what you want here i think 0.5 will be a good value now your label is whatever is the true label this is the true label so whatever is the points are inside the circle are your uh, labels so this is either 0 or 1 then we run for 5000 iterations this is something that you can set on your own it could either be 1000 could either be 10000 depending on how many passes of the data you want to do and what depends on how your data set is right so some data sets might not require very large number of passes some data sets might require large number of passes so this is again which is generally called as an epoch is something that you have to decide based on your own data sets right then here is your predict and classify calls so predict is a call to your linear regression and classify is a call to your linear classification so we will basically be making use only of uh, py for learning and then finally when we print this data set we will use predictions because in printing we need clean classifications whether you are classifying this point as zero we cannot use we cannot plot probabilities right we can plot probabilities but in this sense it makes uh, more uh, it is more important that we plot the exact class of where our model is classifying that particular data point so first is we predict py which is the call to your uh, logit or sigmoid function this is a call to your equality function then we calculate the loss on our predictions right then once the loss is calculated we use the gradient descent to update our weights and biases so gradient descent uh, again i'll not go into how these equations come around but we can use these equations directly so this is the exact equation that we discussed in our uh, video also uh, in a theory video also so you have the gradient descent difference of the predicted label and the true label multiplied by input is your gradient with respect to w and just that difference summed over a, a zero axis is your bias right and then you can update the weights and the biases so this is exactly similar to how we did in linear regression also just that py is your sigmoid function there it was the uh, actual predicted label right output of the regression equation and then finally we print the predictions right so that is why we were calculated predictions all throughout and then finally when you print the loss and accuracy you see that your accuracy and loss is now much much improved you have accuracy of 96 percent and loss of just 11 percent and you see that you have fairly good implementation of a fairly good classification of the points it is only the points that are beyond this arc right which are not getting classified correctly and that is expected also so this is basically i think the best accuracy that you can get if you are trying to classify points on a circle using a linear line right so this is the best thing that you can do so now this we understand how linear regression uh, linear classification can be implemented only thing pending is how the gradient descent part works that that is something that we'll discuss in the upcoming video but you can use this code for your own data sets also for your own use cases also and you can easily implement linear classification without the use of any external libraries so that you get the understanding or the underlying uh, mathematics that is involved while solving these problems so thank you so much for watching please do not forget to like share and subscribe uh, to this channel and also share this video to other people who are trying to learn about the same technologies. Thank you.